In this video, I will be reviewing a hypothetical development pathway for the production of spikes in spiny beetles. Here's a picture representing what is meant by spikes. Above, we are given a pathway that leads to the development of spikes in certain ectodermal cells in beetles. If this pathway reaches the end, these cells will produce spikes. If not, the cells will be smooth, which we'll see later. We can see from this pathway that S promotes the production of P. P produces I, which blocks K. K would normally block E, but since K is blocked by I, E is able to produce spikes. This is the normal pathway with no mutations associated with it. We can assume that S, K, and E are produced outside the pathway. When determining whether or not this process will go to completion, you must look at the final protein, which is E in this case. E is the necessary component to produce spikes, so it cannot be blocked. For our first example, we will look at the pathway with the mutation in protein P. When this happens, P is not able to produce I. Where I is needed in order to block K, K consequently blocks E. This prevents the production of spikes. In the second case, I is the mutated protein, so S produces P, but I is either missing entirely or can't function. When this happens, the pathway is disrupted because there will be no way to inhibit K from blocking E, so no spikes are produced in this mutation either. Thirdly, a mutation at I and E takes place. This is called a double mutation and allows us to understand the epistatic relationship between two mutations. Since this double mutation requires a mutation in E, spikes will not be produced because E is ultimately the piece that codes for this phenotype. So in the pathway, S produces P, but I is unavailable to block K from blocking E. E isn't present, so no spikes are produced. If only E was mutated, this pathway would still not produce spikes, so the mutation at I doesn't matter too much. For the last pathway, both S and K proteins are mutated. Looking downstream, we can see that K is what blocks E from producing spikes. So at the beginning of the pathway, S is mutated, which prevents the production of P as well as I. And usually, as we have seen, when I is mutated, the cells don't produce spikes. This would be the case, but K is mutated as well, which means that there is nothing to block E from producing spikes, so spikes are finally produced. When analyzing this pathway used to produce spikes in certain ectodermal cells, the main goal isn't necessarily to always produce spikes. Mutations that stop production are beneficial for areas that spikes may negatively affect an organism, such as ectodermal cells that lie internally as nervous tissue, but not beneficial for its exoskeleton. The extent of spikes on a beetle may be caused by variability in expressivity, as some may have more spikes than others.